Hello everyone, my name is Monit Kachawa. Welcome to Edu Excite classes. In today's series, we will start 0625 paper code 22 of Feb March 2020 extended version of IGCSC physics curriculum. Before going on to the solution, please read the instructions carefully. Also the information as well. Okay, now the very first question. This diagram shows a rectangular metal sheet close to two rulers. These are the two rulers given to us and this is the metal sheet. What is the area of this metal sheet? As we can see it is a rectangular shape sheet. So by measuring the length and the breadth, we can easily find out the area by length into breadth. So if I want to calculate the length, so this will be the length from this point to this point and the length will be this so this measurement if I say it is 45 minus 10 which is 35 and this is in centimeter so 35 centimeter is the length and if I talk about bread this point this is 25 and this is 5 so it is 20 so the area if I have to calculate area will be length into breadth that is 20 into 35 which is nothing but 700 centimeter square so a is the right answer for the first question now the second part a ball for falls from rest through the air towards the ground the diagram shows two forces acting on the ball. This is the ball. These are the two forces acting. One is the air resistance, which is in the opposite direction to the motion. The ball is falling down due to the gravitational force. As the ball falls, the air resistance also increases, which statement is correct. Now, if I read the, all the statement, the acceleration of the ball decreases. As we know as the ball goes down the opposite force air resistance also increases so f net will be gravitational force minus air resistance and air resistance is increasing so the f net will decrease and f net is mass into acceleration so mass is constant acceleration is decreasing so the right answer is a only now if we read other options the acceleration of the ball increases no the speed of the ball decreases no the acceleration is decreasing i agree but it is not retardation it is not negative acceleration in the velocity will increase with a decreasing rate and last option the gravitational force on the ball decreases no it will remain constant because gravitational force is w that is mass into g g is constant m is constant so w will remain constant so the correct option is a now the third question a compressed spring of projects a ball horizontally in a vacuum chamber on the earth the ball reaches the chamber floor four meter in front of the spring and an identical experiment is done on the moon the gravitational field at the moon is lower we know the experimental result on the moon are compared with those on the earth which statement is correct so now what is happening i have one spring for example let us say this is one spring connect and a ball is projected this is the ball which is projected horizontally in a vacuum chamber vacuum chamber means there is no air so there will be no air resistance as well so only force will acting on it will be the gravitational force only so if it is projected horizontally and it reaches 4 meter look if it is in the vacuum chamber no air resistance so it will project like this and it is from the 4 meter of the spring given to us chamber 4 meter in front of the spring now read out the all the the horizontal speed is greater on the moon and the ball hits the floor 4 meter in front of the spring so if i talk about the 
motion it will be like this and it ha will have two components of velocity one is v horizontal and v vertical v horizontal will have no effect whether it be on moon or on earth but the vertical velocity will have some or you can say speed vertical speed will vary with respect to the due to the gravitational force but where horizontal speed will have no change so a option and b option are incorrect now read the c and d the horizontal speed is same on the moon and the ball hits the floor 4 meter in front of the spring which is similar to that of the earth now if this is the distance this will change in case of earth and moon as moon has less gravitational acceleration so it will hit more because it the acceleration is less so it will take more time or you can say it will have more distance from the spring so the option is d now the fourth question this diagram one has a flexible material that contains many pockets of air the diagram two shows the same piece of flexible material after it has been compressed so that its volume decreases this is before the compression this is after the compression now what happens to the mass and the weight when it is compressed we know that mass never changes and weight is what m into g and we are not considering any change in the value of g here we are just compressing it so neither the mass will change nor the weight will change rest all options are incorrect so the options four that is d is correct okay now the question number five the graph shows the strength of earth's gravitational field varies as the distance from the earth's surface increases as we go to higher to the earth's surface the gravitational field or the strength of the gravitational field decreases which row describe the effect that this has on mass and on weight of an object as it move further away from the earth surface so the g value is changing when we are going above the surface of the earth so mass is a constant quantity it doesn't depend upon g so mass will remain unchanged and if i talk about weight and weight is m into g so g is decreasing so weight of the object will decrease so the option c is the right answer now the question number six a measuring cylinder has 40 centimeter cube of water a solid metal ball is dropped and the level rises to 56 centimeter cube the mass is 80 gram and we have to calculate the density we know the formula for the density that is mass upon volume mass is 80 gram volume is displaced volume that is 56 minus 40 which is 80 divided by 16 so 80 divided by 16 is nothing but if you calculate it you will get 5 gram per centimeter cube okay seventh question a car travels along a horizontal road at constant speed it is given that it is moving with a constant speed and three horizontal forces are acting on the car this is from the engine 5 1500 newton due to air resistance 300 newton and it is given that it is having constant speed it means the f net is equals to zero because acceleration is equals to zero because speed is constant so what is the size and the direction of the third horizontal force acting on the car so we know that two forces are already given this is 1500 this is 300 so a uh, one more force should be act in this direction that two of 1200 newton because 1200 plus 300 will be equals to 1500 and these forces will cancel out and will result in f net equals to zero so 1200 newton in the backward direction is our right answer okay fine now the eighth question 
a car is driven round a band in the road at a constant speed this is bending with a constant speed speed is not changing what is the direction of the resultant force on the car when it is going round the band now if it is changing its direction if there is no force acting it will move in the straight direction but due to a force acting on it which result in the change in the direction without changing in the speed so that force will be acting towards the center or we can say to the perpendicular direction of the motion and towards the inside of the band so the answer that is we have learned in the circular motion only that a force which is perpendicular to the direction of the motion acting inwards so answer c will be the right answer rest all are incorrect now this is very important question 9 most of my students feel it difficult to solve because it is a very good question also an athlete with mass 70 kg it is given that mass is 70 kg trains by performing press up with a load on his back there is also a load the diagram shows the perpendicular distance involved these are the perpendicular distance given to us the center of mass is cm and the center of mass of the load is cl and the mass of the load is also given 6 kg the question is asking what is the upward force exerted by his two arms these are the two arms we have to calculate this force so let us name force by the arm and let us say this is the force by the feet these two forces are in contact with the surface so they will exert an opposite force that is the normal force in the upward direction this cm will have a force due to center of mass of the body or the person or the athlete and this is force due to load now if i want to calculate the upward force exerted by two arms that is force arm so i can say f net should also equals to 0 and net moment will also be equals to 0 so in that case for f net i can write f arm plus f feet equals to fl plus fcm okay so that is the first equation so by using this equation i can write f arm plus f feet equals to load the mass of the load is 6 and g so 60 plus center of mass of athlete 70 into 10 that is 700 so 760 newton is equals to f arm plus f feet so this is the one of the equation which i get by the f net now by using the moment also i have to calculate because there are two unknown variables f feet and f arm so for f feet i have to use the moment equation so by taking the pivot or the reference point as cm 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 as the pivot and by taking the moment about the cm i can write f arm into 0.4 that will be the perpendicular distance from the cm this is the force so perpendicular distance is the 0.3 plus 0.1 which is 0.4 that is my clockwise moment what i am doing is i am doing clockwise moment equals to anti clockwise moment so this is my clockwise moment no other forces is having clockwise moment this is this will have uh, anti clockwise moment about this point this will create no moment because it is acting at the pivot only and this will have a f feet will have a anti clockwise moment so there are two anti clockwise moment one is fl into 0.3 plus f feet into sorry f feet into 0.9 so f arm in 
to 0 0.4 fl is 60 into 0 0.3 plus 0 0.9 f feet so i can write this is 18 so 0 0.9 into f or i can change i can write like this f feet is equals to 760 minus f arm so by replacing f feet here 18 plus 0 0.9 into 760 minus f arm and 0 0.4 f arm so by solving this you can get this is 0 0.9 into 760 will be 702 18 plus 684 if you, if you solve this, you will get the answer 18 plus 684 minus 0 0.9 F equals to 0 0.4 F. So by solving this equation, we can get F equals to 540 Newton. So the answer is C part is your right answer in this case. So this is very important question of this FabMart series okay fine so now the next question an air pistol fires a pellet forward what is the motion of the air pistol so due to conservation of momentum we know that or you can say newton's third law also the air pistol will move backward and this is having more mass as compared to the pellet so we can say it will move backward with less speed than the pellet so option the air move backward and speed less than the pellet is the right answer okay now the 11th question advantages and disadvantages of wind turbine okay if it's look at the options given to us advantage no fuel needed is an advantage yes harmful gas released is an disadvantage no this is wrong variable supply is advantage no no harmful gas released yes variable supply is a disadvantage is yes so answer c is your right in case of 11th if you see the constant supply no it does not give constant supply it depends upon the wind now the 12th question read the question carefully an electric motor provides 900 joule of useful output energy efficiency is 16 percent what is the amount of electrical energy supplied so the supplied we can say the supplied 60 percent is equals to whatever the supplied energy and of that 60 percent is equals to 900 joule so the supplied energy will be 900 into 100 divided by 60 so you get 1500 joule okay so this is the right answer for 12th question now the 13th question a crane takes two minutes to lift a 500 kg load to the top of a building that is 12 meter high calculate the power developed so power we know energy upon time energy is gravitational potential energy that is m g h upon the time taken so mass is 500 g we have to take 10 h is 12 time we have to take in in second so 2 minute is 120 second by solving this you will get the answer 500 watt okay now the 14th question and sky is standing still on a flat area of a snow the weight of this person is 550 newton then total area is also given to us so the pressure is nothing but force upon area force is 550 
and area is 0 0.015 you will get answer 3666 newton per meter square so approximately it is near about option d okay now the next question question number 15 okay a cylinder is partially filled with two liquids which do not mix this do not mix and having two different densities a student measure the pressure due to liquid at different depths and the graphs are as shown so this is position p this is position q so at the position p we have the minimum pressure because it is at the depth and as we go at the depth due to rho g h formula the pressure will increase so up to this we have one gradient and for this we have different gradient because of different densities and if we look at the options no it is incorrect it is incorrect now looking at option a and b it is also increases it is also increased now it is increasing it has a different gradient less than the previous one but the row of q is greater than row of p so this is the right graph for the given question now if you look at the 16 when pollen grains in water are viewed through a microscope they are seen to be in continuous rapid random motion what causes a pollen grain to move in this way so if we say pollen grains are having a random motion then that is because of convection of current in the water no we are not provide any heat or anything else bombardment of a single molecule of water no there are many more volume molecule of water uneven bombardment yes that is the right word uneven bombardment on different sides by water molecules so there are c option is the right collision with another pollen grain due to kinetic energy no in water it is not possible okay so the option c is the most suitable one for the question number 16 now question number 17 a student measure the mass of a warm water in an open container over two minutes the container is kept at a constant temperature and the result are in the table these are the times in minutes given to us and this is the mass of the warm water in the container although it is given that container is kept at a constant temperature so why does the mass of the water change the water evaporates the water freezes the water condenses the water boils if the mass is changing that is because of the water is evaporating 18th question which points are the fixed points of the liquid in glass thermometer shown this is a glass thermometer fixed point it is in degree centigrade so 0 and 100 are the fixed point so it is simpler ones option c 19 very good important question of the series yes specific heat capacity of aluminium iron ethanol and water are given to us with the specific heat capacity in joule per kg degree centigrade now it is showing one kg of each metal is put into five kg of each liquid what i am doing i have a beaker in which i have taken a liquid of five kg and i have kept 1 kg of metal in it now the starting temperature of each metal is given to us is 60 degree centigrade these are the two metals they have a starting temperature of 60 degree centigrade and these are the two liquid having starting temperature of 10 degree centigrade each which example has the highest final temperature now students you have to be very careful the question is asking which has the fi highest final temperature. So I have the formula Q equals to MC delta T means change in temperature. Q is the heat supplied, M is the mass, C is the specific heat capacity, delta T is the rise in or you can say the change in temperature. Now if I talk about the heat transfer which when I just put this metal block inside this liquid the final highest final temperature of this will be depending upon the heat transfer okay now if i say 1 kg of 
metal it is at 60 degree centigrade and this liquid is initially at 10 degree centigrade so the heat will be supplied by the metal to the liquid so more the heat capacity contained by the metal more will be the heat will be transferred so heat contained in 1 kg depends upon the specific heat of that metal so more the specific heat more will be the heat content so the aluminium will have the more heat content as compared to iron so the aluminium will have the ability to transfer more heat to the liquid so that there is a more change in the temperature are you getting my point i repeat the 1 kg mass of that metal will give more energy whose specific heat capacity is more because q is directly proportional to c because masses are same for both the metal so aluminium will have more heat content in it now it now if we talk about the liquid so liquid will rise the temperature more if its heat capacity is less because what do you mean by specific heat capacity it means the amount of heat required to raise one degree centigrade of liquid of one kg one kg of liquid if i want to rise by one degree centigrade how much amount of heat is required that is given by the specific heat capacity so in that case if i want to change the more temperature so the specific heat capacity of the liquid should be less so in if i compare both ethanol and water ethanol is having the less heat capacity so the best pair will be aluminium and ethanol so option a so i will write it if specific heat of metal is more q will be more and if specific heat of liquid is more or we can say let us take it less then t will be more that is the temperature rise will be or temperature change will be more so this is very important i hope you get it right okay now the next 10th 20th question metals are good thermal conductors yes insulators are also poor thermal conductor which describe the best an insulator conduction takes place no conduction does not takes place by electron transfer no in insulator does not conduct that is a poor conductor in metals conduction takes place by electron transfer and molecular vibrations in metals conduction takes place by electron transfer only no so c option is the best suitable for this 20th okay now the 21 a teacher shows his class a polystyrene cup the cup is made from thick plastic with lots of tiny air bubbles in it. He asks the class why the cup is so good at keeping a hot drink warm. Three suggestions are made by the students. It contains air which is poor thermal conductor, yes. The air is trapped in tiny bubbles so very little convection is possible, yes. Air is a very poor convection medium. Plastic is a poor thermal conductor, yes. So all these three suggestions are suitable to keep a hot drink warm so the option d is the most suitable one now the next question 22 a boy jumps into an indoor swimming pool he notices that the water appears to get colder as he goes deeper underwater this is due to convection which statement is correct cold water is more dense than warm water so it sinks to the bottom of the pool yes this is the correct option because the lower the temperature more will be the denser the medium will be so a is the right answer now question number 23 four student a b c d investigate the diffraction of water through a gap each student uses different gap size and a different wavelength of the water waves which student produced the wave which has the most diffraction now if i talk about diffraction what is the diffraction the deviation of the wave from the edges of a gap or an orifice or an outlet that phenomena or bending of light you can say or a def uh, deviation of a wave so it depends upon if this 
gap size is in the order of the wavelength now gap size and the wavelength are given to us which are very more close to each other will have the most diffraction so the difference should be minimum so if i talk about the first option then i can say the difference is the minimum so the most diffraction will take place in the a option so i will write it here most diffraction most diffraction have will have which have least difference between gap size and wavelength okay okay now the 24th question these are some of the examples of wave motion waves on water by the ripple tank waves in air when i beat the drum with a stick the waves on a rope and waves in a spring which are the longitudinal one what do you mean by longitudinal wave which have the vibration in the direction of motion of the wave so this is producing a sound so sound has a compression and rear fraction here also we can say compression and a rear fraction so second and fourth are the longitudinal wave example rest are your transverse waves example so d is the right answer some questions are very easy you can attempt it in the one go and some require a great depth of understanding which diagram shows how the light from a candle is reflected by a mirror and the image formation so if you look at the all the options of the image formation by a plain mirror a light gets reflected from the mirror and reaches our eyes and the observer seems to have a image inside the mirror so a option is the correct rest all are incorrect you can see the options here no image is forming here it is having a different angle no okay because it is not obeying the laws of reflection the normal will be like here it is obeying but the image is not forming here also laws of reflection are not obeyed okay now the question number 26 a converging lens can be used as a magnifying glass what will be the nature of the image so if i talk about the nature of the image formed by a converging lens it is talking about the converging lens and a magnifying image is formed so real inverted and diminished no if real and inverted is formed it will be enlarged or it but it is magnifying glass so magnifying glass means you have to magnify the image real upright upright cannot be formed with real virtual cannot be formed with inverted so last option virtual upright and enlarged yes it can form when the object is placed when we kept that magnifying glass very near to the object so the position of the object lies between the principal focus and the optical center you can remember the image formation when the object is placed between principal focus and optical center of the lens then we form an up virtual upright and enlarged image in case of a converging lens that is convex lens okay okay now the question number 27 it is saying wavelength of a blue light changes from 4.7 to 3.5 10 to the power minus 7 meter as it passes from air to water what is the speed of light in air so by wave equation we have speed of wave equals to lambda into frequency as frequency remains constant so i can say v by lambda v1 by lambda1 equals to v2 by lambda2 by using this equation i can write v1 that is the speed of light in air is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 upon lambda1 4.7 into 10 raised to power minus 7 is equals to v2 i have to find it in water upon 3.5 into 10 raised to power minus 7 so v2 is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 into 3.5 into 10 raised to power minus 7 divided by 4.7 into 10 raised to power minus 7 so by solving this you will get v2 is equals to 2.2 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second okay you can calculate by using your calc c so you will get c as the right answer and always remember that the answer should always be less than your speed of light in air because the maximum speed of light 
is in the air only that is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. Now the question number 28 shows the compression and rarefraction in a air as a sound wave from left to right. A quieter sound means a less amplitude sound will be there without changing the frequency. What will happen to the number of particle in a region of rare fraction and a region of compression? So if I talk about the compression and the rare fraction region number of particle, so rare fraction, if a quieter sound is there, the amplitude will be less. So there will be more number of uh, particle in rare fraction as compared to the diagram shown to us. So the number of particle in the region of rare fraction will increase. These are the options A and B are wrong. And if we talk about the compression, it will get decrease because the number of particle remains the same. If one in one region it is increasing, the other will automatically get decrease. Okay, now the question number 29. It's also a very good question. Different metals P, Q, R inside the coils of a wire. These are the metal rods of different material. Some iron nails are placed on a wooden bench under the rod. Diagram 1 shows when the there is a current in the coil and the diagram show 2 shows no current in the coil. Which row correctly identifies the metal rod? Now we have some options. Look at in coil, it is not attracted when the current is flowing in the coil and also it is not attracted when there is no current in the coil. So it means P is not a magnetic material where Q and R are attracting the iron nails when the current is flowing and Q is not attracting the nails when current is not flowing and R is a that metal which is attracting the iron nails when there is no current also. So I can comment over the metal R that it is a magnetic Permanent magnetic material, it is a temporary magnet material when only behaves as a magnet when current is flowing in the coil and it is a non-magnetic. Now looking at the options, P, Q and R. P is for your copper one. Yes, copper is a non, so it is right. Soft iron, yes, it is a temporary magnet when the current passes through the coil, it behaves as a magnet and steel, it behaves as a magnet because it becomes a permanent magnet when the current passes through the coil, it gets magnetized. So it also show magnetic property even when the current is stopped flowing in the coil. Whereas Q will not show because it has not been a magnet when the current stops flowing in. Okay, so option A is the most appropriate one, rest all are incorrect. Okay, that is the simpler one. What is the direction of conventional current and the electron flow in an circuit containing a cell? So conventional current flows from positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal and electron flow from the negative. If I draw like this, this is positive, this is negative. We draw the direction of current from positive terminal and we know that electrons flow from the negative terminal. So option C is the right answer okay now the next question 31 a student make four register using different pieces of wire the wire have different diameters and length all the pieces of wire of the same material which has the largest resistance so if i have to take the largest resistance so we know that resistance is equals to rho l upon a where rho is the resistivity material and l is the length and area of cross section of the wire so more the length, more will be the resistance. Less the area of cross section, more will be the resistance. So look at the values now. More the length. So these are the two options having more length. Now which will have the least area or the diameter will have more resistance. So B is having the least diameter. So B is the right answer. Okay, now 32. We have a include a voltmeter and ammeter using across a resistor R, which circuit should be used. So we know that voltmeter is connected in parallel and ammeter in series. So last option D is correct. Rest all are incorrect option. Okay, now the 33 one. 
The diagram shows a battery connected to two resistors, three ammeters M1, M2 and M3 are connected. M1 is 1 ampere. What will be the readings in M2 and M3? We know that the all are connected in series and in series and in series combination current remains the same. So the value will be the same that is D option is the right answer. Question number 34. A cell is connected parallel combination with 2 ohm and 4 ohm resistor. The current in the 4 ohm is 1 ampere. What is the current in the cell? How much current is flowing by the cell that it is asking? So let us say it is I1 and this is I2. So I will be equals to I1 plus I2. So I1 we do not know plus I2 is 1 ampere. Also potential difference will remain same because they are in parallel combination. So I can say I1 upon R1 because V by Ohm's law V equals to IR. So I can say I1 R1 is equals to I2 R2 and rest all I know this is R1 this is R2 I1 I do not know R1 is 2 I2 is 1 ampere R2 is 4 so this is I1 gets 2 ampere so if, if I1 is 2 ampere so 2 plus 1 that is total current is 3 ampere it is asking for the cell student current in this cell not in this 2 ohm resistor so do not take it C option the right option will be D okay so please read the question carefully okay now the 35 the diodes sorry logic gates two inputs of an and gate this is an n and gate are joined together so if i give zero so it will be zero and zero so if and gate is having 0 and 0 so the output is 0 so if it is an AND gate so it will reverse and it will have 1 so 0 input will give 1 output so this is wrong this is wrong okay B and D left now if I give 1 and 1 it will give me output 1 if it was AND gate now it will reverse so will give 0 so if out input is 1 I will get output 0 so it is also wrong so option b is the right answer that is if i give 0 0 i will get output 1 and if i get 1 1 i will get output 0 okay so that is the case b option is the right one now the next transformer having the output voltage 12 volt input 240 volt primary turns 1000 calculate the second return so we know that it remains conserved so n1 upon v1 is equals to n2 upon v2 for primary and secondary coil 1000 divided by v1 240 is equals to n2 divided by v2 which is 12 so n2 we get 500 sorry 50 not 500 50 number of turns that is option C okay so now next 20, 37th question the diagram show different particles moving through a magnetic field which particle experiences a magnetic force acting up out of the plane of the paper now the magnetic field is shown and the direction of charges proton electron proton electron is shown to us and is asking for the magnetic force which will have in the direction out of the plane of the paper so we will use Fleming's which rule Fleming's left hand rule for the direction of motion because we have to calculate the direction of force or you can say the direction of motion okay so by using Fleming's left hand rule put your first finger first finger in the direction of magnetic field second finger in the direction of proton is the direction of conventional current okay direction of conventional current so by using Fleming's left hand rule you can easily find out that in the C option only the thumb is coming out of the, your paper or your sheet or your screen you you have to use your left hand not right hand okay use your left hand put your first finger second finger and thumb 
perpendicular or the mutually perpendicular to each other now put your first finger in the direction of magnetic field second finger in the direction of direction of proton or the convectional current is the same then thumb will give you the direction of force exerted or experiences by the particle so the c option is the right one now whenever if there is an electron so you have to take the direction opposite opposite direction for the current okay because we know that conventional direction and electron flow are both opposite in nature okay when rutherford bombarded thin gold foil with alpha particle he found that some alpha particle were deflected through large angles which statement explain this deflection okay large angle is there for the deflection by some alpha particle so when we are reading the option most of the atom consist of empty space yes it is right but it is not relevant with the logic or you can say the statement given to us all of the positive charge and most of the mass of the gold atom are concentrated in a small volume that is known as the nucleus yes that is the reason why alpha particle is deflected through the large angle when it is incidented in the direction of the nucleus so b option is the most right answer positive charge in the gold atom is spread evenly throughout the atom no this is not the conclusion or the observation by rutherford experiment all of the negative charge is concentrated at its center no it is the wrong statement so b option is the right answer okay second last question the diagram shows the path followed by alpha particle as they pass between two charged plates this is positive this is negative we know that alpha particle is having a positive nature and beta is having a negative nature also alpha is more heavier than beta because it is consist of an electron only and it consists of two proton so we can say yes beta particle will get attracted towards the positive plate and will deflect like this so it will deflect upwards b is the right answer rest all are incorrect deflect downwards no not deflected no it will deflect it is of negative nature they are deflected downwards by the same amount as the alpha particle no so the right answer is b last question this graph shows the count rate from a radioactive source over a period of time this is the count rate per second and this is the time in hours initially at zero beginning it has 2000 count rate so half life of the source half life means when it becomes 2000 to 1000 so it becomes 1000 at this point which is 1 hour so the half life is 1 hour okay so this is all about your 0625/22/f feb march 20 series i hope all the options we have discussed all the questions that we have discussed has the right correct options you can check the marking scheme as well and all the detail solution i have discussed with you i hope you like it okay so please share with your friends classmates teachers and if any improvement or suggestion you want to give you are most welcome you can comment in the comment box okay thank you